Hey everybody, I'm Adam. I'm Stephanie. And we're here from the Eclectic Gamer to review. Bum, bum, bum. Race for the Galaxy. This is an older one, but it's a, it's a popular game, so I really wanted to really wanted to get it on there. It's been in the system for a little while. Yeah, it's one that we've been playing for I don't know five years. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, so Race for the Galaxy is a card game for two to four players, I believe, with the base box, and you can expand that with some expansions. Uh, but it's literally just in the box. It's a stack of cards uh, and some chits, and then some play mats that kind of help you through. It looks complicated, but it's not, not really a bad. <laughs> um, uh, so it's a very simple game, but what it does is it gives you the idea of sort of empire building in a card game. Uh, which is kind of cool. So uh, what will happen every turn is each person secretly chooses which phases they want to happen. And one of the really unique aspects of it is that not every phase happens every turn. So if I call for settling planets and Stephanie calls for producing goods, then the other three phases don't happen at all. Um, and those are the only ones that happen. And then when you're playing with more players, you know, uh, other people get to choose which ones they want to do. And then whoever called for a phase gets a bonus in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the phases are pretty simple, just drawing cards, playing um, technology that helps you, playing planets, consuming resources, producing resources. And the idea is that throughout the game, you kind of build up a little engine. Some of your planets produce resources, some of them consume resources, and you get victory points from that. You also get victory points from playing cards out. And there's a bunch of different sort of paths you can go on. You can go more planets, more technology. You can go... Um, producing resources or just for expensive cards. Uh, and the idea is you kind of build your galactic engine and you just kind of see how it goes. Uh, and whoever has the best galactic engine as measured by victory points at the end of the game wins. Um, it's got sort of a built-in mechanic. Whoever, whenever the, the certain number of victory point chits is taken by the end or a certain person, ha any person has 12 cards out, game's over. So it always ends in a reasonable amount of time. And that's basically Race for the Galaxy. Uh, but uh, as we've done in other videos, let's just go ahead and explain how we're going to re really review it here. Um, we're not going to go too in depth into the rules, but what we are going to do is, based on our website, uh, tegratings.com, we're going to tell you what attributes this game has. And these are all the different reasons you might like or dislike the game. And one attribute that makes one person like it might make another person dislike it. So they're not, they're not kind of good or bad. Um, if you want, you can go to our website. Put in how you feel about all these different attributes, and it'll spit out a 1 to 10 score for you. So you'll know you can use that to figure out what Race for the Galaxy would be for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's get right into it. Stephanie's going to start. So uh, some of the attributes that might influence whether or not you personally would like this game. Um, first off, as Adam mentioned, there is interact player interaction. Uh, if somebody calls for a certain phase, then it happens. Uh, so, in addition to the phase that you're calling for, you also get to take advantage of what other players are calling for. Sometimes that is a negative, such as if you were, if you wanted to produce goods and then you wanted to trade them for more cards, but uh, somebody else called consume and you didn't, then instead you're going to have to trade them for victory points. Um, yeah. So, but there's not too many things that I think negatively impact you, it's more, uh, that you'll get a benefit from being able yeah. to do other people's actions. Yeah, if someone calls for you to draw cards and you get to draw cards too, they might get to draw more cards because they called for it, but you still have them. Yeah, there's no direct player interaction though in this game. So I'm not like building planets and then going to go and attack Adam's world, for example. Yeah, there's no attacking other people. There's no, you know, negatively impacting other people's, uh, you know, game. Um, I think one of the expansions adds that, but we haven't gotten that one. Uh, it's very We're much... We're also only reviewing the base game. Yes, that's true. Uh, but yeah, it's very much sort of, I'm going to do my thing. It might have an impact on you, but for the most part, it's really hard to like screw someone else, right? And screw your neighbor, so... Yeah, I think um, the only thing I can think of is if the game... The game ends when um, either you draw all the victory points or uh, somebody puts down their 12th card, I believe. Yes. Um, so I guess if you thought your neighbor had a really great card and you were on you you had 11 cards you could really quick try to you end the game try to end the game but yeah. but i mean they still get to play the rest of the round but um you might be able to end a game that way or you might be able to say hey there's only one more victory point 
yeah. left. I don't know if we're playing it wrong, but we never draw all the victory points. It happens, it happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, but some people might like this because they want to be able to do their own thing. They don't want someone else coming in and screwing them up. But some people might not like it because they really want they want to be able to actually interact with the other players they're playing with. So that's mm -hmm. why it could be a plus or a minus. Yeah. Uh, next, one thing we're talking about, we're going to talk about two of them, but one is what we call construction games, where one of the core engagements of the game, one of the reasons you really like it, is because you're building something. So this is sort of abstract, but the idea you're building an engine um, of, of your glide, your planets and your, and your technologies, your developments, I think they're technically called. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be technolo as technology. But you, um, you're building it and you want to see it work. And so part of the fun for the game for me is like building up this galactic engine and seeing how well the choices I made actually work to function you know, given the uh, constraints. And some people, that's kind of too much for them. They'd rather just, you know, it's not something they enjoy. It's something they'd rather just attack someone or build an army and go do something. But to me, games where you build a civilization or a, you know, galaxy or even like a spaceship where you're actually physically building something, those are, those, I like those a lot. Um, and th this game definitely has that. And at the same time, like, there's a lot to do for that. And so we said strategy games is something this game has. There's a lot of strategy trying to figure out which cards you're going to go with, how they're going to interact with each other. So we kind of put that together. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is relatively unique for a strategy game, but one thing that makes that more of a challenge is that this is a game in which there's a lot of randomness because a lot of it is all dependent on what cards you draw uh, and whether or not you're able to put down the cards that you want to play. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, this is the next uh, next attribute. In case yeah. You didn't know, uh, a game where randomness plays a significant factor. Yeah. So because everything is done based on drawing cards, this isn't like Puerto Rico, for example, where everything is laid out and you can pick exactly what thing you want. Yeah. This is you have to you have to get cards. You draw them. Um, you have to do certain actions in order to get more cards. Uh, there's a couple of times where I notice that the strategy that I think I'm going to start off with at the beginning of the game changes about four turns in based on what cards I've drawn. Yeah, so like sometimes entirely different to an entirely different strategy. Yeah, so sometimes like your initial hand, you'll have like, okay, I have a lot of these resource worlds that build brown resources, so you start playing those, and you're like, okay, I'm going to get go get more cards that have brown resources, and I work with those, and then none of the next 12 cards you yeah, draw. Yeah, of the next 12 that. cards you draw are all military planets that don't even like pay attention to what color your cards are and or your planets are. <laughs> and some people like that because they go, oh, okay, this is random. You know, I have to roll with the punches and I have to, you know, deal with this. But there, some people go, well, I want to do that strategy and now I can't because I got didn't randomly get dealt the right cards. And so yeah. It could be a plus or a minus. So, and then um, a lot of times the at the final end game, uh, when you're doing the end point game, counts sometimes you'll uh have drawn specific developments that if you play at the end they'll be worth a lot of money mm -hmm. if you have certain cards out um but if you can't get the developments out that would match the cards that you've already laid down then you're someone at, else can you'll be yeah. at a disadvantage uh yeah because you can't choose what exactly what you want randomness is definitely a significant because yeah it's all randomly drawn cards so uh so another concept that we have here on the site that we think is kind of unique is we talk about Sometimes people will put these together, but we talk about randomness and consistency. Randomness is how much ran does randomness actually impact how many different things are randomly decided through dice rolls or card draws and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's just strictly talking about the mechanics. And then we separate out the concept of consistency. How well can you do from game to game? Can you? How much can you use the knowledge you gained from the previous game to impact this game? So some games will be both... A lot, a lot of times you see it'll be very random and inconsistent. It be, and because it's so random, you can't even like really use your knowledge to win next game. So flux. Yeah, yeah flux. Very random. All the cards are drawn random. randomly. You don't know what to do. And then like you can use a little bit. You can go, oh, well, I know these two cards go together. So when I steal one, I'll steal that one in case it comes up. But it doesn't really do that much. And so I wouldn't call flux consistent. Mm -mm. Um, but some games can be random and consistent. So we talk about poker as like an example everyone knows, it's something that's random very consistent. You ha you consistently have the same people um, showing up in the finals of the World Series of Poker because even though it's very random about what you get, people who are good at anticipating that randomness and knowing different combinations and doing some math can consistently do well in that game. And so even though it's very, very random, it's also consistent. And yeah. uh, I don't know, I think Stephanie didn't know what to put for this, but I just said Race of the Galaxy is consistent. If you're playing a game for your first 
time against someone who's do, played you know dozens of times before, that person's almost certainly going to beat you because they know, okay, this is the kind of cards that are out there. I can this one's not going to be good for me, even though it appears like it might be. So I'm going to throw that out. I'm going to waste this. I can use this strategy to get these cards, and I think. This is one of those interesting cases where it's very random, but also very consistent. Yeah, I think the reason I felt it was slightly less consistent is because of all the randomness. If you find winning strategies, there's no guarantee that you can then implement those strategies That's in future true. games. So, you see, Stephanie's on the fence. Uh, I thought it was consistent, but I don't think I put it as hugely as consistent. So games where there's, like, games with very little randomness, you'll get a huge bump for the consistency as well. Whereas this one, they kind of, the randomness and the consistency might kind of balance each other out. Mm -hmm. I'm talk about the next one stuff. I think this is one that you uh, have that yeah. I did Yeah, well. so I have resource management, although it's more like card management than resource management because your resources are your cards. But it's interesting because um, the cards have sort of two purposes, right? They do. So in addition to them being the planets or the developments that you're playing, which then give you bonuses when you're during certain phases or are what ultimately net you victory points, in order to play the planets or the developments, you have to spend cards. You so discard any, them. You, you discard, discard them. So any any cards that you discard in order to play a planet is one that you can't then save for later to play yeah. uh, differently. So th there's definitely an element of managing resources being cards hand management yeah. uh, in this game. So if it's not something that you like, then this is... This is a game you're probably not going to enjoy very much. Yeah, I think it, this, what this also shares in common with a lot of resource management games is making tough choices. So you might have five cards in your hand and you'd be like, oh man, three of these cards are really good, but this one card is the best, but it's going to cost me four cards to play. So I have to discard all these cards, including these other two good ones. So you have to make a lot of tough choices because these cards are, they're resources in more than one sense. So I think... I might change mine. I don't know. I think I think I think that's probably good. <laughs> I convinced you. It's different than just having cards that you play turn after turn. I wouldn't call that resource management, but because these cards are also your currency, essentially, right? I think it falls into that category a little more. Yeah, if they weren't your currency, I don't think I would call it that either. Yeah, uh, and so uh, the last one I have here that we're going to talk about in depth is bluffing. Now, this is sort of an advanced strategy, I'd say. I don't know if even we're we've played enough games to do this, but if you get really yeah, into it, I don't it, think we've ever. We've had this game for five years. I don't think we've really explained it. I do. It's involved a lot of bluffing. We stopped that playing for a little <laughs> while, but um, yeah. because you get to choose which um, phases happen and it affects everybody, there's an interesting little metagame that you play in the middle of it where you go, well, I really want to play a planet this turn, but I also want to consume these resources and get more cards. Then you can look around at the other players and they're, what they have out, but you don't know what's in their hand, obviously, and you can kind of go, well... Do I think Stephanie is going to call for settling planets this turn? If so, I can go do that consume resources. And I can get both. But if she doesn't call for it, then I won't be able to play that planet I really want to play. And at the same time, Stephanie can go, oh, Adam looks like he really wants to play a planet. And he's counting on it. I do want to play a planet, but I'm going to go do this other thing so he can't piggyback off what I want to do. I'm going to make him call for the planet phase as well. I think the reason I don't think of it as bluffing is because you're not actively trying to convince somebody else of what you're going to do. Yeah. I don't think I add it as a, as a big impact. So in addition on the site, in addition to saying this game is a bluffing game, we can also say, well, if you love bluffing games, this is going to give you a plus four. And if you like bluffing games, it's going to give you a plus two uh, to your out of ten score. I think I only gave it like plus ones and minus ones for like and dislike and hate and love so I don't think it's huge but there is that little bit there yeah. if, you, if you really want to get into it I actually really just like bluffing and I don't yeah. mind it in this game so yeah. well, there you go um, so we're gonna rapid fire a couple of really quick ones here yeah, that are mostly self-explanatory I'll jump in a couple things to know it's a competitive game it's not cooperative it's uh, mostly based on cards so if you dislike card games you prefer board games then if you want a little, something you a little more like physical to it, then... Yeah. It has a sci-fi theme, although I think it's kind of tacked on. Like, it, it's not... Yeah. I don't think it's very heavy with the theme. Uh, it's quick. It, our definition of quick being that it takes about under an hour, I think, if you're playing with... Uh, 30 to 60 minutes? 30 to 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing with four players, it might be close to the hour. Um, it, I guess that is also worth noting that the more players you add, the more time it takes to play the game. I don't know about that because you get more cards because more actions are happening. But I think it does take the a victory longer. point pool increases. Yeah, so. but also everyone's taking from the victory points instead of just two people. So yeah, but I'm saying the point, the pool. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but more, know, more players like, make stuff more confusing. So exactly. it definitely does take a little longer. And you're doing, instead of doing like two uh, actions per turn, you're doing four. So yeah. up to four. Um, but it's still, like I said, it's still, if you're playing with maximum number of people, it's still an hour or less. Yeah. And um, last one was, we feel it's a little anticlimactic. It's a victory point race. Once you get, deplete the pool or you put out the 12th card, then it's like, oh, now the... Are now once the phase is over, that's the end of the game, and we count up the victory points. It's a little less uh, climactic than other games. Yeah, I guess if you like are like super card county in your head, and you'd be like, well, Adam has forty seven out on the table, and he's got with all his chits, and Stephanie has thirty seven, and she needs to play this big card to get. It. Like, I guess you could feel it, the energy it, 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 but you really have to like <laughs> be doing that because like. You're kind of just like, oh, the victory point's whittling down. I guess we'll probably be over in two or three turns. Oh, yeah, it was. And then we count up our victory points. And so it doesn't, like, build just some big climactic ending like some games do. It kind of just, you know, peters out and it's over. Yeah. Um, but a lot of sometimes climactic games can, you know, um, they can feel like it devalues the, the rest of the game. Right, like if it all, all came down to it was a thing. Like when we played Battlestar Galactica, yeah. and we're like, oh, it just came down to a die roll at the end. Four plus humans win. And then you're like, <laughs> it was very climactic because you're like, oh, what's gonna happen? But it, it feels like, oh, well, like you said why, why did we spend three that hours thing? for a die roll? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the uh, anticlimactic is an interesting one to talk about. Uh, but anyway, that is Race for the Galaxy. Ooh. It, yeah. Um, so how, what, what's your opinion of it, Steph? Just so a little personal um, stuff in here. I like this game. It's not my favorite. Uh, I think I have it rated about a 7, which I think is, or the system shows that it's about a 7 for me, which is accurate. I wouldn't say I love it. Yeah. It's not one of those games where if somebody suggests we play it, I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to play that game. Yeah. So it's pretty average for me. I'm the same, too. Like, So I like a lot of games, right? That's why I, it's one of the reasons the site is called The Eclectic Gamer. Uh, so... Me saying it's a seven is not a bad thing by any <laughs> yeah. means. Like almost every game is like. Oh, a I have a lot of games that are fives or twos or things yeah, like that. I don't like well. a ton of games or a wide variety of games. So. so I think I also had this around a seven. I really like the game. It's fun. We played it sort of into the ground when we first got it because we wanted to like we kept wanting to see all the different combinations and get better at it. Yeah. So um, that might be part of it. We had a lot less games back then. <laughs> but it's also it, it's fun. It's quick. Um, you feel like you really accomplished something and built something in half an hour, which I feel like a lot of games can't say. Yeah. But I don't get super duper excited about this game. I'm not like, yes, we're going to play Race for the Galaxy, my favorite game, yeah. like I do with some others. But it's it's a really solid game. It's It's got a great niche of, you know, it's a small deck of cards and some chits. It's really easy to carry around. Um, it can but be played two-player. It can be played two-player with some of the variant rules that are in the game. Uh, people get to play two cards instead of one to choose mm -hmm. phases. Um, so I feel like it's a really solid game with a really solid niche and that I like. I just really like, but I wouldn't say I love it. Yeah. The site also gives me about a 6.5 or a 7 on it. So yeah. that, that's Race for the Galaxy. Finally, we got to talk to you about the site again. So again, if you want to get customized board game ratings on a 1 to 10 scale for a bunch of games, including Race for the Galaxy and, and a bunch of others, you go to our website. and It'll be up, up here somewhere. Tagratings.com. Um, <laughs> not my fault if it's over there. You have more headroom. Uh, Tagratings.com. What you do is you'll go through and you'll enter a bunch of these attributes. You'll say, I love construction games. I like games with indirect player interaction. I dislike games with where randomness plays a significant factor, but I love consistent games and so on. And what we'll do is we'll take all those attributes that you rated, we'll compare it against the game profiles that Stephanie and I have created uh, in, the, in the database, and it'll spit out a rating for you. It says Race for the Galaxy will be an 8 for you. And then you can compare that against a bunch of the other games we have as well. And if you really like the site and you like what we're doing here, um, you can create your own game profiles. You can register on the site. You don't need to register to get the scores. You just only need to register if you want to create your own game profiles. And you can go through and say, these are the attributes I think that Race for the Galaxy has. And yeah, this is how I think... way off base. Yeah, okay. totally. Then go ahead and create your own profile. Prove us wrong. Make a better yeah. game profile. Yeah. Uh, and then you tell us, say, I think Race for the Galaxy has these attributes, and I think this is, and it has a little page there that can, you can say, and this is how I think it'll affect different people who like and love and dislike and hate these attributes. And then your um, game profile will then affect everyone who who uh, uses the site. It'll show up in their community ratings, and you can check it out. Yeah. Uh, we really need more uh, people making game profiles. There's a bunch of games that Stephanie and I don't play. 
Um, this is one of the we don't play a lot of competitive games. This is one of the few we've done. Yeah. Um, so we really need people that could come through and do some of these more popular competitive games and and you know help other people who are using the site find more and more games. So please help us. Uh, but that's about all. Uh, once again, I'm Adam. I'm Stephanie. Uh, we're from theeclecticgamer.com, and that's our review of Race for the Galaxy. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye. Bye.